Okay, folks, this will be my second video. Give you an update of all that I've done on my Odyssey project. And to uh, kind of keep an update, keep you guys uh, going on the project. And show you things that I've been doing to it. <coughs> Excuse me. I've done some painting. Trying to take care of rest spots and stuff like that. I haven't done any more welding. I got a welder on layaway, a Hobart uh, 140 handler. And uh, I ain't got too much more to pay on it, and I'll have it. And that should work better than the stick welding. Uh, the stick welding I have not had much luck with on this tubing. And uh, it's really been a pain in the butt with the stick welding. And uh, everybody keeps saying that MIG welding is great. I've never done MIG welding, so I'm anxious to get and try it out. Uh, let me show you on the inside. I've been working on a parking brake system. That little lever right there is out of a Pinto. That cable is also out of the Pinto for the uh, system. And if you follow it back here, you'll see the bracket that I made that holds a caliper that you can get at any lawnmower shop. Uh, there's a little lever right there that pulls that has the two pads that, that um, clamp together right there. That's just a piece of angle iron and you see I drilled it to make it look pretty and all that other stuff. The original brake caliper which is the Odyssey, I'm rebuilding it right now, it goes right here and fits right here. This is the original Odyssey brake hat. Now I'm going to put a spring from here back to hold it and I'm working out my brackets and stuff. I'll probably use uh, make a bracket right here to hold this and to get it all together. Uh, that's the system I'm coming up with. Um, other things I'm looking at is that my axle may have to I may have to go and redo the whole axle system. That pin right there that goes through that yoke is the only thing that's holding that yoke to the axle. And I'm thinking when I put my 75 horse motor to turn in this thing, I'm going to have some trouble. So i got to look at things like that. I'm looking at maybe redoing the whole axle system. I have an idea of putting a pair of brackets coming down right here off this frame. Put a heim joint there and welding brackets right here and do a A-arm, which would be stronger than this single arm system that I got right here now. That's an idea I got. I think it would work out good. Uh, I'm sure any machine shop should be able to, to make me another axle right there. The, uh, the thing is, this is the only thing that's holding the axle in place right here. And if this lets loose, and there's going to be a lot of force put on it, I mean, that's it. I won't be able to, it'll be tough to even just limp back into the pits or to get back into the, uh, onto the trailer. Uh, I've painted my floor in there. Uh, still going through seats. I've got a lot of problem with seats. But uh, we'll go on that a little bit right later. Right now, uh, show you the bracket, show you the... I'm working on my rear end ratio, my sprocket ratio. Uh, so far I haven't, haven't figured it out yet, but I will for too long. Uh, here's something you need, you might like. You can see there's foam inside this tubing. Well, here not too long ago I seen water dripping out and this whole thing was full of water. So that means rust. So, to keep it from rusting, I stuck spray foam inside there and filled that whole thing up. That's an idea for all you guys that are building these tube frames. If you have any, if you don't want water to get inside it, and water will, you might fill it up with foam or you do the next best thing. Down here at the bottom of all your tubing, drill a hole. Because when you're welding on this thing, you build up heat and gases inside here. It's got to go or it's going to blow. But, no matter what you do on these, they leak. Water gets inside them. So, I um, drill you some holes at the bottom of these tubings. It'll keep it from rusting out. I'll show you proof, because I had one tube that blew out. You see this right here? It's kind of hard to see. But that is where ice collected, water collected in here, froze and blew it out. And anywhere there's a weld, there's a chance for water to get in. So that's some ideas that I got to do to fix this thing. 
I still haven't found any shocks yet. I gotta have like a 16 or a 17 inch long shock. I'm still looking to get some. Um, stuff like that. Let me show you my motor. I picked up a 1987 uh, Arctic Cat built by Suzuki. It's an Arctic out of an Arctic Cat Cougar snowmobile. It's a two-cylinder, 500 cc. It's between 65, I'd say 60 to 75 horsepower, somewhere around there. They come with a clutch system like that. That come off that. And from the same people I bought it from, I bought this secondary clutch system. That's going to go back here. And there'll be a sprocket put on that shaft right about there. You know, go to that that sprocket. And that's how I'm going to power this. But I'm looking at going through that thing uh, just to be sure. Uh, I'd like to see if I could rig up a electric start on it. If I can, you know, whatever. Um, these things were built with low compression to make it easy to start. And... One easy way to hop these up is just bump that compression up. It's like six and a half to one compression. So um, I'm looking at some things. I got to do a screen on that air intake where the air comes and blows through it and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to be working on a the body that's going to wrap around the back side right there. I got to finish the body that wraps around the front too. Uh, I got to look at better feet placement. My feet placement probably needs to be moved up. So far in my testing, it hasn't worked out too well. Okay, let me show you my seats. As you can see, I've, I've had a couple of, I've tried a couple of things out. This seat is out of a Volvo. Now, it was brown when I first had it. But you're saying it's black now. Yeah, I painted, I painted it with Rust-Oleum paint. And the reason is, that makes it impervious to the uh, UV rays. Water will not make it rot now. I mean, it's pretty durable. The problem is, is that here at the bottom, it's just too stinking tall. See how tall that is? My feet, or my legs, hit underneath the steering wheel. And I've even cut sections off this to lower the seat as much as possible. I got these brackets built and everything and still after all my testing I can't get that seat to work. So uh, I'm going to have to look at other things. This is another seat out of a van. I think it's a Toyota or Nissan van. Uh, the bottom is not flat and it's kind of there's not a lot of cushion right here. That's that's not something that, that worries me too. But you see, the bottom end isn't flat. It isn't easy to work with. So I'm going to look at a, a dune buggy seat with a cushion that I can remove that'll get down lower, lower in there, and maybe I can still put some uh, adjusters to move it up and down so different people can, can still work, uh, use it. But I gotta have more room underneath here. Uh, that's the thing I've seen, that's the problem I've had with my Odyssey so far. Uh, you can see the little paint splotches I've done here. Now it's just to cover up rust using rust oleum and stuff. Uh, I perforated them uh, uh, mounts right there. You can see it's real sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I like how sturdy it is. And, uh, no, well, I ain't got much else I'm gone over. The gas tank, it goes right here. I've plastic coated the inside. Um, I'm going to guess it's a five gallon tank. I'm not real sure. I don't like tanks that are mounted up high, but that one's got a good mount system and it's gravity flow, which will work good. Uh, it's going to be tough to see on this motor. There's an oil injector down there at the bottom. I will be removing that. I had a real nice scooter that I had hopped up the motor and ported the transfer slots, shaved the head, bumped the compression up. The scooter was so bad it would smoke the tires. But the oil injector went out and the motor locked up. So 
that was a pain. But anyhow, this is where I'm at so far. And I uh, thought you guys like to see more of this. This is coming along slowly. Uh, I don't have room in my shop to put it inside to get out of the weather, so that makes it even worse. But um, right now I'm just doing things a little bit at a time. I'm working on some motor mounts. Um, I got the stuff at the um, oh crud, the uh, machine shop that they're working on. See that piece of steel right over there? That goes underneath the rear. I'm trying to work out some mounts for that as to have a full skid, pan, skid plate pan on it and stuff like that. So right now that's where I'm at and that's where I'm going to leave this. So uh, y'all stay tuned and I'll have more videos and uh, keep you guys informed on this project. Take care.